This is the Black Experience for all. How do you think a, a minority journalist should serve in his capacity as a journalist? Well, you're not serving as a minority journalist. You're serving as a journalist. So you serve in the way any other journalist serves. I mean, how does a, a female journalist serve? How, do, how does an Indian journalist? How does a, a, an Hispanic, a Hispanic journalist serve? How does a black journalist serve? How does a white journalist serve? I mean, is there a dividing line? And there are different rules for different people? I don't think so. Let me give you, the public, a snapshot of what I saw today, and then it's done. It's gone, and tomorrow's another snapshot. I can't buy the reason given, and I do not accept the reason given by the administration for keeping journalists out of Grenada. Uh, journalists uh, went ashore at Normandy at D-Day uh, and certainly didn't compromise uh, that action. Uh, I covered combat in Vietnam and in Cambodia and never compromised any military operation. I don't think there is a journalist who would have gone on that operation who would not have abided by their rules and would have compromised any of those missions. Uh, in summation, that it is possible to draw a line and to put your opinions aside and to look at something objective. I I've interviewed the Ku Klux Klan. It was obvious how I feel about the Ku Klux Klan, but I let the man state his viewpoint. I mean, I interviewed a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, what do you have to say? Tell me. And I, I we broadcast it on CBS reports. This is what you believe in? Fine. And there was a question and answer session. And I mean, I'm surrounded by these guys, and I can see the guns under the road. I can see the baseball bat. Okay, fine. I don't believe you're going to do this on national television. Okay? <laughs> Some of them even know I serve on the board of directors of Jazz at Lincoln Center here in New York City, where the artistic director is 34-year-old Wenton Marsalis. Is my doing a story about him a conflict of interest? If somebody wants to think so, I can live with that. Not long ago, critics were saying jazz was dead, that no one wanted to hear it anymore. But then Marsalis and his trumpet came along and breathed new life back into the music. What changed your opinion of Louis Armstrong? Well, I, I started listening to his music. And from first, I tried to play some of them. <laughs> the Mafia's day-to-day -day operations in places like this, New York City's Garmin Center. For decades, the Mafia has had a stranglehold on business here, siphoning off tens of millions of dollars every year in illegal profits from clothing manufacturers who then pass on those costs to consumers. Say, look. I've got these truckers over here who are going to move my suits. These are the people I want to use. I don't want to see your people. What happens? First thing they're going to do is go grab the trucker and tell him not to pick your work up. Now you're going to be sitting with all your work ready to be shipped out, and there's going to be nobody to pick it up. They're going to look to attack you in another way. Dad loved music, jazz, classical, all kinds of music, especially when it was played by a virtuoso like his friend Witten Marsalis. And you know, that's what Ed was himself, a virtuoso at all kinds of reporting, investigations, profiles, interviews. We'll miss him for that. And we'll miss him for the man, the friend that he was.